Hello, my name is Kevin White, and I'm an assistant professor of science education at the University of Texas at Arlington. I completed my graduate work in Chicago at the Illinois Institute of Technology. My research focuses on model-based learning, scientist-science teacher collaborations, conceptual change theory, and nature of science. I have taught both in private and public schools, grades 5 and 7 through 12. While teaching middle and high school science, I received recognition for my work in bioethics and STEM instruction, or science, technology, engineering, and mathematics instruction. I'd like to take a few moments to tell you about one of my research interests, nature of science. Let's start by asking, what is science? Well, we know it's a body of knowledge. It's the concepts, theories, and laws that make up that body. There's also uh, processes and methods, the ways in which we go about obtaining that um, body of knowledge. And then finally, there's nature of science, the characteristics of the knowledge, mostly the knowledge that comes about by the fact that we're human beings. Um, uh, there are certain implications and characteristics of the knowledge that we obtain. Currently, the emphasized goals of science education include scientific literacy, and the National Research Council defines that. We also have inquiry as being part of scientific literacy, as promoting an understanding of the scientific endeavor, critical thinking skills, and scientific literacy, and also nature of science. These same bodies identify the fact that it promotes scientific literacy in itself. What is nature of science? It typically refers to, uh, well, a technical definition, let me give you first, is the epistemology of science. Science is a way of knowing or the values and beliefs inherent to scientific knowledge and its development. Uh, let me give you some examples of what I mean uh, or aspects of nature of science that might help you understand what I'm talking about a little bit better. There's tentativeness. That scientific knowledge is subject to change, creativity, that it, because human beings are do it, doing it, it necessarily involves imagination, that uh, there's observations, and these observations lead to inferences. These inferences, going back, are based upon these observations. So distinguishing between those two is important. Subjectivity, that uh, the background, the unique differences between scientists uh, in part uh, are the reason why two scientists can look at the same data and yet come to different conclusions. Functions and relationships of theory and law that, uh, for example, a, a theory is an explanation, whereas a law is a description, where uh, a theory can never become a law, and a law can never become a theory. Those types of things um, related to theory and law. Socially and culturally embedded that science is influenced by society, and society is influenced by science, that two-way interaction. And finally, empirically based, that scientific knowledge is based on the... Uh, our five senses or extension of our senses like a telescope or microscope. Now what I, where I'm going with this is I would like to share with you uh, where my research is going is focusing on the intersection of learners. N uh, each of these are knowledge domains. Um, the pedagogy, knowledge of teaching, knowledge of curriculum, of subject matter, of schools and of learners. The intersection of those is, is specific to certain, to the subject that's being taught. And in this case, looking at science, the pedagogical content knowledge that we're talking about is how do we teach nature of science? The specific strategies, the specific ways we might go about teaching nature of science. So one approach is to be implicit about it. It's by doing science, students will come to understand the nature of science and scientific inquiry, and that was popular in the 60s and 70s. 
But there are several assumptions. Unfortunately, I don't have time to go through. You can go ahead and pause and take a look at and send me an email if you have any questions about it. Um, but the research does not support the effectiveness of this approach for enhancing conceptions of nature, science, and scientific inquiry. So just by doing science, sci uh, science students will not necessarily understand uh, nature of science. Another approach is using history of science to teach about nature of science and scientific inquiry. Uh, historical pr approach, uh, what does the research say? Well, it often assumes that present beliefs have resulted from a linear logical progression from past beliefs, which is not necessarily the case in the history of science. Students often develop the impression that past beliefs and scientists were simply uninformed and ignorant, which again is not the case. So what else does the research say? It says that it's virtually impossible for students to suspend prior beliefs during a role play activity, for example, if they're uh, studying the history of science. And it has demonstrated only moderate success when the focus has been on the tentative, creative, subjective, and subjective aspects of nature of science. And finally, it has not been effective with respect to understandings of scientific inquiry, something else we could talk about. But let's focus on nature of science. Uh, the explicit approach. This treats the understanding of nature of science and scientific inquiry as a cognitive outcome, not a byproduct. The goal of improving students' views is planned for, taught, and assessed. That instruction is geared toward various aspects of nature of science or scientific inquiry and utilizes elements from the history and philosophy of science. And it encourages reflection that connects aspects of the nature of science and scientific inquiry to the classroom activities and the activities of science scientists. This is talking about the explicit approach could also be talking explicitly about aspects of uh, nature of science while coupled with the history of science. So uh, the key here distinguishing between uh, these three approaches is that teachers elicit from students responses that demonstrate their understanding of particular aspects of nature of science. and and in the beginning teachers are um, guiding students, more guiding students towards identifying those aspects during their own inquiries or during um, reflections on the history and philosophy relevant aspects that they've been studying in class. Um, and research consistently supports this effectiveness. Um, Research on nature of science and scientific inquiry. A few generalizations can be made. Students do not typically possess adequate conceptions of nature of science. K-12 teachers do not typically possess adequate conceptions of nature of science. Conceptions of nature of science and scientific inquiry are best learned through explicit instructional attention as opposed to implicitly through experiences with doing science. Two more here. Teachers' conceptions of nature of science and scientific inquiry are not automa automatically and necessarily translated into classroom practice. And finally, teachers do not regard understandings of nature of science and scientific inquiry as an instructional outcome with status equal to that of traditional subject matter outcomes, which leads to the issue that uh, students won't learn what is not taught and in addition to that if you want students to learn something you need to teach it and then assess it they won't value it if you're not going to teach nature of science and scientific inquiry as content well that's been a brief uh, summary of one of the areas of my particular um, interests in science education, areas of interest in research. If you have any questions uh, or any comments, uh, feel free to contact me. My email is kjwhite at uta.edu.